obtainable through the internet. Yeah. Okay, so the so the governor of the state in question of the state in question would be the best person to address that to. Well, um, I would I would uh, the the state attorney general would be the uh, individual responsible for the justice department of that state. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. So they would be the senior official that you would give the writ to, and then you would give notice to the governor and the lieutenant governor. Yeah, that's how a great writ would be issued on habeas corpus. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Frank, what you're saying is that, uh, let's say a family member or a friend is in, uh, unlawfully detained and has been taken away in, in uh, holding or in jail, um, being held, and you do the habeas, the, the great rid of uh, habeas corpus. Now, you're say, what you're saying to answer that question then is that you've got to know the date and time to go through the process to get a trust number and life born record for that man or woman? Correct. And, and if you can't find the time, then we'll make clear that, that the default of 1am is perfectly fine because the day is fine. Um, it, it's just the it's just not only obviously now to find that so you can have the life born record issue because that's fundamental, but the the seriousness and therefore the seniority of the kinds of individuals you'll be writing to is of the utmost importance. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that, Frank. All right. Uh, is there any new information on the EIN numbers? I'm glad this question was asked. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad it's asked. So EIN and, and trust accounts, I know, are a, a perennial problem. So this is this is the issue. Um, we are very close to revising our section there on trust accounts to effectively say to you that um, it is it is almost not worth you wasting a single moment trying to register trust accounts with banks that are playing games. Um, we don't want to be supporting the banking system when we have our own system that we want to encourage between our communities. We're not here to, to feather the nest of Bank of America. The second part is with the EINs is that there's still lots and lots of different issues coming through. And I said that we have something in place yet, but we've deferred it slightly because um, quite frankly, if uh, we're about to change the form of the EIN application, and if the IRS still play games on this particular change of form, then we're going to remove the step of an EIN as part of the trust system. We're going to remove it because it is not core. It was never a core part of this. It was merely an act of respect. And because we're dealing with a system that is finding it impossible to demonstrate respect. I don't want it to continue to be a distraction for any of you. I'm glad that people are trying to do it. I, I'm sad that people keep getting obstructed, but it is not a core activity that you need to be engaging in. And if you're getting uh, de declined, I would rather have it removed as a step than it being a constant frustration for people when they go on to uh, setting up the EDP trust process. All right? Yes. Uh, okay. Thank you, Frank. Uh, next question. Will there be examples of senior level entities or names for province, state, country specific listed on university.ucadia uh, website or the other societies? Um, are you referring to the people to send a great writ to? Um, is that the question? Or are you saying, can you give us the names of the officials of these sites? So I'm going to take it both. Let me, let me, I, let me assume. Hmm? I would say both as well, but it, yep. it would seem to be as to uh, what the contacts, who the contacts are going to be at the appropriate societies. 
Yeah. No, it's a good, great question. It's a great question, and we are going to be transitioning into uh, society and deeds and trusts over four weeks once we have got the issues of home and court uh, and writs in place, then the shift will move towards communities. So here's the thing. You can't have a deed executed without trustees. And under the revisions of uh, One Heaven, all officials, all officials down to the state level in the first execution of the deeds are spiritual members of One Heaven and not flesh members of One Heaven. That is, famous, well-known members with their numbers redeemed are appointed the officials as uh, administering the trusts on our behalf until we collectively at our state province level begin to aggregate under the same deed and charter for that particular region and elect our officials and appoint people into positions and then start to collectively with other states and provinces that have done the same elect the national body. Now the reason for this, so the short answer is the names of those officials, their membership numbers as spirits will be listed progressively as we complete the deeds. They're not there now, but as the deeds are executed, the names of those officials, the background of those officials and why will be made available. And the reason for this is so that there is no possible way that any organisation can take control from the top down. Furthermore, it's to eliminate any possible corruption of having individuals come along and as I leave exit stage left, stage right, that others come along and say, I am now taking this over. That's not going to happen. As people aggregate at a state by state, state and province level, you will be selecting your representatives and it's up to you to come together. If you don't, then that state will remain dormant with its spiritual membership until such time as people are competent to come together. But I'm confident that this will happen quickly. So I hope the logic is understood. Now as to the listing of officials of the current Roman systems, I think that would be an excellent uh, tool to have available but I leave that up to those that are starting to help with content on university.uk.info to think of that like a Wikipedia type app that would make it a lot easier for folks to work out who they need to write to. So anyway, I hope that answers that, that, that question. All right. I believe they'll uh, expand on that one for us if, if we haven't completely answered that one. All right, Frank, oh, this message uh, got sent to me, question. Uh, what is the purpose of the Lifeborn record and uh, what registry, once the, uh, the uh, separate societies are established, uh, what register are those great, are those uh, Lifeborn records being placed in at that time and what is the reason for that? Okay, excellent question. The Roman system and the roles in which they put us on is claiming not just a record, but it's claiming an event in time and space. So the Pope is a timekeeper and the Roman time system is used to control time and space and they are claiming an event. The great register of one heaven and the Eucadian time system claims all time events from 10,000 BCE right through to 2500 CE. And it does so to uh, eliminate their false claims. If one is to validly contest title and validly contest the events, then one must mirror and have a superior model than the existing system. And I use the comparison of canon law as an example. 
For centuries, people have believed that if they merely chose to ignore a bad idea, it would go away. Bad ideas do not disappear when we close our eyes. They remain. The only way to eliminate a bad idea is to consume it. If you attack it, it learns, it strengthens. It's why the system has succeeded because instead of people consuming and mirroring, they have attacked. And unwittingly, those that we follow in the form of those that manned the truth movement, the patriot movement, that tried their best in the past, unwittingly, by becoming adversaries to the system, have helped the system survive because by attacking it, it has learnt and it has adapted. We have now adopted a strategy that they have used and it is a strategy of consumption. So canon law can only be defeated as a bad idea with superior canon law. The slave roles and the system of unlawful slavery can only be consumed by a superior system. If someone does not understand that, they need to go and read and think and reflect on that logic. It's the reason that this system has survived for hundreds of years because people have misunderstood what they're dealing with and how to consume bad ideas. That is why we're doing what we're doing. Now, who, who has the states and the local uh, societies have their own registers and in those registers they, restore, they store information about lesser trusts. But the great register of one heaven stores divine rights and stores uh, true records, true trusts. And anything less than that will be in lesser registers so that there is no possible way in this system ever again anyone claiming that they own your soul, your flesh or your rights. Never, ever again. All right? That's the reason. Okay, great. Thank you, Frank. Um, what is the purpose of the trust or trust recipient number, and when and how should that be used? Um, look, I mean, really, you need to go and read and understand the background on um, trust. And we've gone through this many, many times in the audios. And so what I'd suggest is whoever asked that question to please go back and read Positive Law. And please go back and listen to the audios because we've gone over this over and over again. But, but the purpose of a trust recipient number and the purpose of the trust is this. You cannot defeat a bad idea as sophisticated as this one by simply closing your ideas, closing your, sorry, closing your mind and pretending that, that it's going to go away. You have to move forward and out position. So what the trust recipient number allows us to do is state categorically whenever we are challenged by the question, what is your name, by stating clearly and unequivocally that we are registered on a superior register and that any claim the system has against us is null and void. That is the purpose of saying we are a trust recipient number. Now, while we claim our name, in a court in the fractions of a second that a judge wishes to establish jurisdiction is not enough time to have a philosophical debate. So we must establish a position immediately that tells them that they are in for a contest, which is why we need to be competent and why we must read. If you don't read this, if you don't listen, then you are by definition incompetent to this material. You have to be incompetent to this material. If you don't read it, if you don't listen, how could you be competent to this material? And when you read it and you listen to it, then it is very easy and very quick to pick up that these tools are here to help you establish your superior standing. So that if you've spent years fighting claims of right, that I'm a sovereign, that I'm a free man or a free woman, these are not bad.